welcome to Metro Arts. I'm your host, Shayna Fields Clark. And right here on Metro Arts, we highlight some of the best in the business. From fine artists, photographers, performing artists, cinematographers, as well as musical artists, all from the Metro Detroit area. On today's show, we have R&B recording artist Trez Leary and his band, recording artist Timothy O'Rickery, and actor and singer Steve Blackwood. We're pleased to welcome R&B recording artist Trez Larry to our studio. Hi, nice of you to join us. Hi, thanks for having me. See, I told people today that I'm not the only one that's wearing colored jeans. So oh, we got on white, which is not a color, but right. it's in season, white and color jeans. Thank you, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so Trez, enough about fashion. Okay. Can you uh, tell us about how you got your start like uh, in Detroit? You were born and raised here. Mm -hmm. Why is it so meaningful for you to just perform here in the city of Detroit? Ah, well, see, music is actually my passion. Um, I enjoy doing this. I, I, I kind of sense music as a freedom of expression. You know, sometimes you may be going through some certain things and you don't want to do anything that will be, you know, violent. So music is my way of expressing myself, you know, getting through it and my, my way of venting. Mm -hmm. So and I what, just like... At what age did you feel that you wanted to become a musician or artist? Um, I would say probably when I was I, I, I was into music. My mom said that when I was born, I came out snapping my fingers. <laughs> we actually have a picture of it. It's, oh. it's really funny. But um, I believe I, I, I believe I got maybe real serious about nine, uh, nine, ten years old. But I actually didn't come out to sing in front of people until I was maybe fourteen. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually in high school, and uh, I was I remember when I was in a computer class, and uh, these guys were singing to these girls, and I'm all on the computer shy. So I was like, hey. I finally got the courage, and I was like, I bet you I can sing better than y'all, you know, trying to compete with them. I sung, it was like, hey, you should get into the variety show. So I did the variety show, and the response was just amazing to me. So I, it was like, I kind of like the attention when it comes to performing, other Absolutely. than anything else. <laughs> so when that, I got that attention, I was like, hey, this is something I, I really enjoy doing, and I, I really enjoy, you know, having that effect on other people, you know, having a good time when I perform. So. That's great. So tell us about, you're working on a new album. Um, what's yes. the project, uh, what's the name of it, and can you tell us a little bit about the project? Um, well, it is self-titled, Trez Larry, and it's basically about me. Um, it, 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 it goes through uh, different genres of music. Okay. I, uh, I, I'm more so of an R&B pop singer, but I have a little bit of a jazz flavor, you know, with it, um, a little bit of a rock, pop rock flavor with it as well. Absolutely. So I kind of give, you know, all these genres kind of mixture in, and each song is kind of, is actually different. So okay. that's you know the gist of it. Okay, it explains me. So you're rehearsing for a play. It's called Let the Truth Be Told. Can you tell right. us a little bit about that? Now the play did actually already take place. It was actually March third. Okay. Um, but I did rehearse for the play. It was an amazing play. Um, the character that I played was uh, this guy named BJ. I was basically playing a, a, a young 17 year old in the play. They said I look the youngest. <laughs> so I played the young 17 year old in the play, um, and it was basically about. Uh, uh, my mother, she, you know, s slept around, did a lot of things, okay. didn't realize that it was my real father until I was 17. She came out and took us on the show, which the show was called Let the Truth Be Told, um, kind of like a Murray show. Mm -hmm. um, she took us on the show, and that's when she, you know, let it all out, and that's why I realized that, you know, this wasn't my real father. Okay. And quickly, just right quick, can you tell us a little bit about the concept of the Avengers Youth Organization? Yes, the uh, Avengers, actually. Um, that's no problem. They, it's what it basically is, is a movement for uh, young males. Um, we basically try to provide uh, foundational uh, skills and tools for them to, you know, be better <laughs> in the world, you know, uh, accomplish other things. And it's basically they bring other uh, male role models for them. Um, and so they did actually have, they put together certain events to run, uh, raise funds for them and everything. Um, and they put together this one event that they want me to be a part of. Uh, which was a music concert, and okay. they invited different artists, rappers, singers, and it was a, it was a nice event. It was a big turnout. Okay, well we can go on for days, but I'm sorry I have to cut you right there. <laughs> That's no problem. We're running out of time. <laughs> well, I want to thank you, okay. and you, up next you're going to perform for us. That's yes, I'm definitely on uh, one song, two songs of mine actually. One is called Invisible, and the other is called More Than. Okay. So.
Our next guest is a fine artist, Timothy O'Rickery. Hello and welcome to Metro Arts. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure being here. Oh, it's great to have you. Thank you. Okay, uh, so Tim, you, uh, you're you born in uh, Nigeria and you moved to the United States in 1995. Can you tell us why you made that big you know, transition? Everybody around outside America wants to come to America because it's a place of milk and honey, a place where you could pick money on the street, a place where there's possibilities, a place where there's success and unique formation of value. And I'm among 100,000 of Africans or Nigerians who want to come to the States. I came here to, in some way, extend my knowledge of our art and also find another way to better enhance who I do, what I do, who I am, and the possibilities of creating something better for my future. Okay. Now, you study at Delta State University um, in southern Nigeria. Is that where you develop a f uh, the passion for fine art? Actually, I'll take you a little bit backwards because. Okay. Uh, when I was age 17, I didn't even want to be an artist. I met somebody who was creatively, wonderfully, uniquely sound in her creative ability. She was a German-trained Nigerian artist who could do it so fluidly. And I told her, if you do this, I think I can. Um, so technically speaking, I had to go to more tutorials because I was already 17. I didn't take pen and pencil or paint while I was younger. So I had to do a quick fast-forward 
learning, and I'm still doing that today. After I graduated from high school, I had to go to college, and I spent one extra year instead of four. I had to do five, so I had to get a breast. And um, so it started from a primitive, backward, secluded school in Nigeria, um, and that's where my career blossomed to where I'm at today. Wow, long journey, very long journey. So, um, is that uh, when you were younger, before college? Is that when you developed, like you knew that's what you realized that, that you wanted to go into? I actually was a disappointment to my parents because my father wanted to be, me to be a preacher like he was. He was okay. this sound, wonderful, dynamic man, and so it, there was a 369 degree shift mm -hmm. because I found that creativity was like expanding your attributes of creating something out of nothing. And so I was determined at age 17 that I could pursue these and create a life, a livelihood, and also an attribute of some historic measure for posterity and for people who are still around. Absolutely. So, uh, speaking about your family, though, um, I know before we got on camera, I had a little time to chat with you. How does your family support like your artwork, and how do you contribute back at home? Contribute. I know you. It is a culture. It's a cultural thing, not to let your family be behind. I come from a family where I have 27 nephews and nieces, five sisters and a mother who I have to call almost every week and nephews and nieces who I have to conference call. So they support me by praying, but I support them by making them smile to the bank every now and then. But actually, I'm trying to have several degrees in counseling, in art, and in theology and all that. I support them some way from this mindset I think I have in keeping them straight and keeping them upright in some way. But they do enhance my creativity by praying for me every and every other day and every other hour. That's great, and that's what they should be doing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you mentioned um, um, as an artist you're constantly searching for diversity, um, and you were once quoted uh, to like uh, say that creative, imaginative, thought-provoking pieces. So are these are some of the pieces that you brought with us, uh, brought with you today. Are these some of the imaginative, creative pieces? Yes, they are. I don't see things the way the normal creative mind should, and neither should anybody see things in the content of what it is. We're all different. We're all unique by itself. The painting behind me reflects what Detroit is. Detroit is a place of creative giant people like those in the music, like Marvin Gaye, Diane Ross, Smokey Robinson, um, Eminem, and all these great, wonderful people. So in most of the things I do, it's reflected in the beautiful, creative, musical heritage Detroit has. She's also a place that has wonderful motor, great automotive industry, and it's, that in, it's embedded in the painting behind me. It also has great architecture, like the painting you're going to see back there. I currently am having an exhibit in five places at the same time. One of the places I'm having an exhibit reflects the grandeur and the beauty of Detroit. And so it shows the architecture, like the other piece over there, it shows the architecture, but it also shows the massive expanse of water. Sorry to say, just from a different culture, a different pers perspective, I tend to see things differently, and I try to show that in what I create. Absolutely, definitely more of a positive side of the city of Detroit. I think so. One thing everybody fails to understand is wherever there is a mess, there is a miracle. Wherever there is a body, there is a blessing. Wherever there is a misguided form of nothingness, there's so much body. And so my life is a mixture of miracle in the making and a mixture of possibilities. My paintings are in aesthetic value. My paintings are in something you see and you go, oh, oh, it's great. It's something that gives hope, excitement, beauty, possibilities, success, joy, hope, and strength, and value. And so what I try to do is to craftily create that in these pieces I have. Even though it may sound and look like midnight, it's actually a boarding place of fragrance of spring of Detroit. Well, thank you so much for joining us here on Metro Arts. You've done a lot. I'm pretty sure you'll continue to do a lot. <laughs> thank you so much. Mm -hmm. It's my pleasure. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to thank Timothy O'Rickery for joining us here today. You're watching Metro Arts on Detroit Public Television. He's an accomplished TV, film, and stage actor, known in Hollywood for the role of Bart on NBC's low and running soap opera, Days of Our Lives, and a national recording artist. Please help me welcome Steve Blackwood to Metro Arts. Hi, how are you? Good, Shana. How are you? It's a pleasure you have it being here. It's Thank wonderful. you so much. Thank you. It's great to be back in town. Wonderful. So, Steve, tell us a little bit about how you got involved in acting. I got involved in college at Oakland University. Okay. Right in college, I, got, I took an intro to acting class. I got hooked by uh, the, the acting and the applause in, in class. And, and that's what made, gave me the impetus to go to New York. But it was because of Oakland and their wonderful teachers over there. Okay. 
And speaking of New York, you actually went there and appeared on a couple of uh, uh, off-Broadway plays mm -hmm. you did, and then you also did nightclub uh, doing jazz, right. jazz music. I was, I was doing jazz, but before that I was doing blues music called Business of Blues, my group was, and that's where I met my wife Karen uh, at a blues gig at the China Club. She uh, happened to be one of the groupies. Don't say that. Okay, sorry. <laughs> and uh, we got, we met, and uh, she said to me, you know what, why don't you go to California? You know, there's not so much film and TV here in New York. You love film and TV, let's go to California. I said, okay. So we drove across country, and we did that. That was a honeymoon. So you save money. I save money, yeah. <laughs> save a couple of bucks. Okay, so uh, can you tell us, I know you work with uh, various celebrities, Gerard Butler, right. Jamie Lee Curtis. Explain um, how it is working with some of uh, those celebrities and the roles you play. It's wonderful to work with these, to, to work with Jerry and Jamie Lee. And I, in fact, I, I work with David Caruso on NYPD Blue, okay. Tyne Daly. And they're all such, they're so, they were so giving to me as a new actor in California. In fact, Tyne even said, Steve, let's, you're a singer, let's play Name That Tune. So when we weren't shooting, she was, you know, we would sing a few bars and she'd guess the tune and I'd guess the tune. And we just had, had a ball. They, they were very giving. When they're, when they're real pros like they are, they make it easy for guys like me. Okay, absolutely. And then also, um, you brought a clip uh, with you today. It's called The Machine Gun Preacher. Can right. you explain a little bit about that? Well, uh, I, I play a bank manager, a mean bank manager, who denies Jerry Butler, who plays Sam, the real Sam Childers from Machine Gun Preacher, mm -hmm. alone to help his kids in Uganda. And he's showing me pictures of kids with their arms torn off and everything, and I'm just saying, no, I can't give you any money. You're, you're, you're leveraged, you know what I mean? So it was a very passionate scene on a very passionate set with those guys. Mark Forster was the director, and uh, I just couldn't have been any happier to be involved in the project. I want you, I want you to look at this. It's a, a 10 year old boy. Doc, he had his arms cut off, just hacked off. This is not necessary. It's that, not necessary. That, no. Could you come back in a minute, please? Here. Uh, please. Now, look, I only got one truck over there. I need the money to get another vehicle. Now, I found this one in Kampala that I can get. We already took out a second on your home. I got a real good deal. Sam, we know what you're doing over there in Africa, and we snap support it, it. But I'm telling you, we cannot give you I'm any more money. You hear what I'm saying? Sam, Let me look at this. You're completely look. leveraged. See this? Yes. This girl watched her family being killed, and then they set her on fire. This is not now, necessary. You see that? No, Sam, no, no, John, just look it. at John. John, look at the picture. I'm looking, look Sam. at the picture. Now, I ain't asking for money for a hot tub or a vacation or something like that. I'm asking for, for an extra vehicle so that I can save some children, John, okay? Do you understand that? I do, but okay? I'm telling you But right nothing! But nothing! Now, I need you to, to get in your little your little book there and do whatever it is you gotta do Sam, to get me that mom. Don't tell me to calm down! And what are some future projects that we can expect from you? Well, the Besides future being teaching yeah teaching, teaching and not only the, the the big project is that it's so funny i went to oakland university and now i'm going to be teaching at the honors college in the fall so i come full circle and i'm also going to be teaching at hillsdale and i do my classes every month in, in bloomfield hills as well as doing uh, gigs at the music hall and baker's keyboard and all around and now i'm incorporating more of my blues right. and you're going to see me do a, a song uh, from my new cd with robin ford uh, into my jazz act, so I'm finding that I'm going back to my roots, which was blues, oh. and, and I'm doing that. Okay, that's so great, Steve, and thank you for joining us here on Metro Art. It's been my pleasure, Shannon. Mm -hmm. Up next, Steve will perform a blues selection entitled In the Heat of the Night. In the heat of the night When you're sitting by the phone Nobody is at your side You are all alone Every day, every night You've been thinking what went wrong Yeah, cause baby, nothing is going right You are all Nobody told you you'd be missing her so bad. Yes, and nobody told you she'd be the best girl that you've ever had in the heat of the night. 
Now you're listening to this song. Yeah, and baby, you're getting fairly tired. Yeah, you're getting tired of it. Sada do ba do 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 in the heat of the night now you're listening to this song baby you're getting fairly tired you're getting tired all along well every day and every night you've been thinking what went wrong yeah, cause baby, nothing's going right Not when you're all alone Dig it Nobody told you You did missing her so bad Yeah, and nobody told you She'd be the best girl that you've ever had In the heat of the night Now you're listening to this song Baby, you're getting so tired. You're getting tired all alone. You're getting tired all alone. You're getting all alone, all alone, all alone, all alone, all alone. Well, we hope you enjoyed today's show, and I'd like to thank our guest, Trez Leary and his band, Timothy O'Rikri, and Steve Blackwood for joining us today. I'm your host on Metro Arts, Shayna Fields-Clark, reminding you to always support the arts in your community. 